Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news. One signature that could be the first step toward overturning the Supreme Court's landmark Roe v. Wade decision that legalized abortion. Just over an hour ago, Alabama's Republican Governor Kay Ivey signed into law the most restrictive abortion bill in the country. The bill passed the state Senate last night. It outlaws abortion at every stage of pregnancy with exemptions for serious health risks, but not for rape or incest. Doctors who perform an abortion could face 99 years in prison. Critics of the bill point out that it's the same or even less time than a convicted rapist. And if they even attempt it, a doctor could be locked up for 10 years. That is significant, but as I touched on, there's the bigger picture what it could mean for the fate of Roe v. Wade. A Republican sponsor of the bill in the House, Alabama State Representative Terry Collins, makes no bones about it. She called it a, quote, direct attack on the 1973 U.S. Supreme Court ruling. She says it's about challenging the decision, protecting the lives of the unborn. It's a message shared by other Republicans in the state Senate. A life is a life, and um, even if it is, um, its origins are in very difficult situations, uh, that life is still precious. Life is a gift of our Creator, and we must do everything that we can to protect life. Now, as you might imagine, Mr. Chambliss, there is one of the people who voted for the bill, one of the men who voted for the bill. In fact, only men voted to support the bill. That's not sitting well with Democrats in the Alabama State Senate who are taking issue with the 25 men in all. Here's one of the opponents of the bill. Republicans, you y'all, you guys used to say, we want the government out of our life. We want them out of our business. We want them out of our bedroom. Now you're in my womb. I want you out. You don't control this. You don't own this. This really does seem to be heading toward a showdown in the Supreme Court if they choose to take it up. It's worth noting where the public is on this. The most recent polling shows 57 percent want it to stand, 21 percent say overturn it, and 22 percent are unsure. Joining me now, one of the only doctors who performs abortions in Alabama, Dr. Yashika Robinson. Doctor, thanks so much for being with us. Um, can you just explain, as a doctor who provides abortions, the effect this law will have on the communities that you serve? Well, thank you for having me. This law will have a devastating impact on the patients that I serve. Um, we know that abortion care is health care. It is very necessary in many instances. And with this law, it will limit options for women who are pregnant. It also ties the hands of physicians as we um, look to take care of women. The, the notion that if a doctor does perform an abortion after law goes into effect, they could end up serving more jail time than a rapist or someone who commits incest. Does that make any sense to you? It makes no sense to me. Um, there is no other area of medicine that doctors are restricted in this way or criminalized in this way. Um, it is not right to penalize physicians for performing a service that certain individuals find morally um, objectionable to them. Um, we do know, like we said, we want lawmakers to not insert themselves into our personal lives. Women and physicians can make these decisions for themselves. We already know that abortion care is very safe. Um, and, we, and this just shouldn't happen. The, the law does leave an opening for serious health risks to the mother where a doctor could use, quote, reasonable medical judgment and perform an abortion. Are you clear about what exactly that means? Because it doesn't seem like it leaves the door open for someone to question a doctor's judgment after the fact. You know, as an obstetrician um, who also performs abortions, no, I'm not clear about exactly what that means. I've already met um, instances where it is difficult for us to determine those things in the healthcare setting now, and it has resulted in delays in care. So in the instance where now, as a physician, I have to contemplate whether someone is going to um, go back and scrutinize care that I've rendered to my patients and whether they're going to agree or disagree and whether they're um, their opinion could cost me my freedom. Um, it puts me in a difficult position. It also puts me in a position where, I, you know, as a physician, I feel like I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. You know, on one hand, I can end up serving jail time, but on the other hand, if I don't do what's best for my patient and my patient is harmed, then I have to 
worry about potential litigation from the patient or her family. That should never happen. Do you plan on continuing to provide this service until the law goes into effect? And, and uh, once it goes into effect, what do you plan to do? Absolutely. I do contend, I do intend to continue to provide services until the law goes into effect. Um, until that time, we're going to continue to take care of women every single day, reassure them that we're here to take care of them. We're going to continue to work with women to teach them to advocate for themselves. We're going to continue to speak up and speak out. We're going to gain consensus from other people to see if we can keep this law from going into effect. And if we are unsuccess unsuccessful, then I will do everything that I can within legal means to make sure that women can continue to have access. If that means f helping women to find the financial means to get to other areas, if it means me traveling so that I can increase access in other areas, I'll do what it takes mm. because I know that this is important. Dr. Y Yashika Robinson, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Lots Thank you. Lots to talk about with CNN political analyst Kirsten Power, CNN senior political commentator and former Republican presidential candidate Rick Santorum, and CNN chief legal analyst Jeffrey Tubin, whose best-selling book, The Nine, explores the inner workings of the Supreme Court, where this battle is most likely headed. Um, Kirsten, where do you, how do you see the significance of what uh, has just happened now in Alabama? Well, I mean, I think it's significant on a lot of different levels. There's obviously, you know, a lot of people are talking about the political significance of it. And I think that Republicans have made pretty clear, not just with, with this, but I think with the, the, the Infant Born Alive Act, which was um, something that Ben Sass had sponsored and all the Republicans had voted for, that they're making abortion, first of all, a political issue in, in 2020. There's the legal implications of it, which Jeffrey can get into more about the fact that they are, uh, it's not just Alabama that's passing bills like this. There are other states and they're doing it um, in part because it's what they believe, but also because they want to get something to the Supreme Court because they're hoping the Supreme Court will overturn it. And then there's just the, the, the substantive impact of it, which is it's, it's incredibly extreme. Um, it's, it's something that's even caused some division in the, in the pro-life community, the idea of not even having exceptions for rape and incest, something that close to 80 percent of Americans support. Jeff, uh, back in June when uh, Kennedy announced his retirement, you said, uh, and I want to make sure I get this right, uh, you said that, that abortion would be illegal in 20 states in 18 months. You got a lot of pushback. A lot of uh, Trump supporters were saying, what are you, a mind reader? How, how can you say this? Do you I, I, for better or for worse, I think I was right. I mean, look, Donald Trump said in the third debate with Hillary Clinton, if I get two or more appointments to the Supreme Court, automatically, that's the word he used, automatically Roe v. Wade will be overturned. And I think the president was exactly right. Roe v. Wade is gone, and every woman in Alabama who gets pregnant is going to be forced to give birth soon. And that's going to be true in Alabama, and it's going to be true in Missouri, and it's going to be true probably in Georgia. And that's what the law is because that's what the presidential election was about in part last time. Would this go into effect, though, if the Supreme Court hasn't ruled on it? Well, I think they are going to rule on it, and I think they're going to uphold it. I mean, this is what this fight has been about for years. I, I think the, the, the legislators were very smart. They waited until they got five votes on the Supreme Court, and now they're going to push this thing through, and Brett Kavanaugh and Neil Gorsuch are going to be joined by Chief Justice Roberts and Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito, and this is a victory that Rick and others have been, for, have been fighting for decades, and they've won, and they should celebrate.